Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well today, enjoying your summer so far. This is my reading wrap up for the first half of July and I hope that you are having a good July reading month thus far. Let me know how your reading is going in the comments. You will see me reacting to the book shortly after I have finished reading them. And so you will see me in various spots in my house, my yard, maybe a little bit everywhere. I would love it if you would like and subscribe to the channel. And here we go with my July first half reading month. Hi friends, so I just wanted to come in real quick and tell you what I have finished reading. It is the beginning of July and I started these the very end of June, so I'm technically cheating. I didn't start them in July, but got a little jump on it. I finished The Spice King, which is a historical romance, and it was uh, very predictable in some ways, like a lot of romances are. This was dealing in the 1900s. The protagonist is a man who has really... Um, supported his family um, financially, rebuilt after the Civil War era, and he has um, built like a spice empire. There are some definite issues in his family. He spent more time with his family, and he meets a botanist who has been trying to get some information about him for the Smithsonian Institute, and she has a blind sister that she's brought to Washington, D.C. in order to have her able to learn Braille and to volunteer and use the knowledge that she's learning at the Library of Congress. So we have that and I liked the topic of that and they made her, you know, they showed her panic because she'd recently become blind because of an illness and they also showed her, even though it showed her panic because it's new to her and that it was normal for her to have panic attacks, it also showed her being extremely capable, which I think is important as well. She was learning to do things and she it was not like, oh, you know, she's helpless. So it showed her, you know, being empowered um, through doing that. I thought that was interesting. Although parts of it were predictable, there was one twist in the story. You know, you're, you the Smithsonian sent this botanist to get information from him. And I thought that the twist was going to be oh, she's just like using him and he's going to find that out. That was not the plot twist at all. It does leave us hanging a little bit at the end of the story. This is a series. I'd assumed that this was a lot of, going to be like a lot of kind of a little bit more Christian historical fictions where there's a, it's a series, but you have like different characters and it wraps up the storylines at the end of each one. Mm -mm. Nope, we're left hanging. So I definitely think I will eventually continue on with the next book in the series. I don't know when that will be. I also finished listening to The Office BFF. This is the story of Angela Kinsey and Jenna Fisher's time on The Office. And oh, it was so heartwarming to hear about their story on the show, their best friendship hearing stories about like Steve Carell and John Krasinski and the other people on the set and just what a family their show was. I have a little bit of a Steve Carell story. I used to live in Burbank, California. Don't worry, I'm not blowing anything privacy wise there. I don't live in California anymore, but um, I used to live in Burbank and I would see this guy. I was like, that guy riding his bike looks a lot like Steve Carell. And then I eventually found out that Steve Carell rode his bike in Burbank. So I was seeing Steve Crow on Spike. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I definitely recommend The Office Ladies um, um, audiobook. It was great to hear their voices, and they had some other people from The Office come in and use their voices to tell stories. Rain um, Wilson's was really pretty hilarious, who played Dwight on The Office. All right, you guys, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Hi there. I just finished listening to Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, of course, and I just absolutely adored it. I think that it is such a great, like a lot of her books are statement on class and snobbery. And it's so funny to me how I love gossip and pettiness in the Regency setting, but I can't stand it in my current times. So can, can anyone else relate? Do you find it endlessly amusing to have like pettiness and gossip in Regency times, but you cannot stand it in the modern day setting. What is that? I just wonder, can anyone relate to this? 
All right, well, I'm on to listening to Mansfield Park, and I will update you guys as soon as I'm done listening to that. And with my eyeballs, I'm currently reading uh, the Royal Assassin Book 2 and 4 Series Trilogy by Robin Hobb. Hope everyone is having a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hey friends, I just want to let you know that I finished The Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb, which is the second book in the first year's series. There, it is a trilogy and I really enjoyed it. I like her writing style. She's extremely wordy. So if you don't like wordy, you may not like her. And those of you that are fantasy friends, but you do not like political fantasies, you may not like this because it is very political. The last 20% of the book had me extremely stressed out. It leaves you on a very interesting cliffhanger. Um, I love the characters. I love the character development and I kind of like where the plot's going. There's one member of the royal family that I would just like to murder or just knock upside the head or something. And there's also some uh, people that have special skills that work together that have been affected, um, had their minds affected and they also um, I would really like to kind of just beat them upside the head but <laughs> I really enjoy the main character Fitz I really like kind of his mentor um, that he that had raised him when he was young I think you name say his name Burek um, it may be Burek but I think it's Burek um, do you ever um, visualize actors that you've seen in your head well the guy um, from Downton Abbey that was, oh, I'm blanking on his name, Anna's love interest. He, in my head, I see that guy. What is his name? Tell me his name in the comments. I'll probably have looked it up by then though. This is going to be wrapping up my first half of July reads and in the second half of the month, you will hear, after I finish that, you'll hear my thoughts on the audiobook of Mansfield Park, Red Rising, and what I think of Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn. All right, I hope you guys read a lot. Have a fantastic day.